everyone watching at home, you're with Adelaide Eternal bringing you the coverage from our Adelaide Eternal Legacy Cup 2019. I am Sava McClinton, in the booth with me is Beckett Wall. G'day guys. We have an extra special match here. These are our interstate competitors. This is round four of coverage. And on the left, we have Tyrone Phillips from Queensland. He's travelled all the way down, representing uh, the Toowoomba crowd, amongst others. And we also have on the right-hand side, Sean Brown from Melbourne, none other than Sean Brown. Let's have a look at their deck lists. Shall we check out Sean Brown's list first? Let's look at Sean's. It's a uh, pretty cool old-school mongoose. I haven't seen too many. Mongoose was like tier one for a long time, but uh, I haven't seen too many lately. Um, it's a really streamlined deck. He wants to get out a turn one threat being Mongoose or Delver, and then Goyf, ideally, I think would be another turn one threat, but there's not too many others you want, so he's just gone with Goyf. I think he said he tried Terramander, and he didn't love it. Um, yes. And then it's backed up by like Dazes and Force of Wheels and Stifles and uh, Wasteland, so it's a it's like a rug tempo list. Yeah, basically. it's the way that the way that the sequencing often goes is. Uh, uh, you know, turn one, you make that decision between whether or not you play the Delver of Secrets or you hold up Stifle. And oftentimes the correct answer is holding up Stifle and then going to your next turn, then playing the Delver, having the days back up, and then stifling their land. Like, the, the value of a 1 minus Stone Rain is so huge. Well, so he's only got 10 creatures, so protecting those creatures is pretty important. Mm -hmm. So if you, like, rush out the Delver, nothing wrong with that, but if you rush out the Delver and can't protect it, oh. then, like, it can be a bit awkward. You look like um, a muggins when you've got the spell pierce still sitting in hand, and you're like, ah. Yeah, and <laughs> probably even threat. an even better example is the Mongoose, because if you haven't seen Mongoose, uh, with Threshold it gets Hexproof uh, and becomes an actual threat. So it's not even hexproof. It's even worse than hexproof shroud. Okay, there you go. Well, <laughs> worse than hexproof. I mean, it get like the point is yes, the deck's fast. It's a fast deck, but it's a tempo deck at its heart. So you know you you you've got to protect your your few threats. There's only ten of them in the deck. Mm, yeah, yeah, it's sweet. And he's got some unique cards in there as well. He's got the one-off mission briefing, and the one-off predict. I think he didn't like one-off predict. Right. I think I overheard him saying okay. it's probably wrong. It's in place of another time ago or something, yeah. right? Because at the end of the day, usually uh, rug tempo is all about 12 threats, right? Like exactly 12. And then you go, oh, do I shave a Tarmogoyf in this meta to try something else? And uh, he's chosen to do the shaving there. And then uh, turns out mission briefing might have actually been, been the preferred one, maybe. I don't know. We'll be able to check out how it performs in this match, eh? Yeah, let's, uh, well, check, let's out check out Tyrone's out. list. He's playing Parfait. I can't say I've ever played against Parfait. I've seen the list. I really like Scroll Rack Land Tax interaction. If you haven't seen that, uh, Land Tax gets you an absurd amount of card advantage, but the card quality is terrible because you get three lands in hand. Uh, and then Scroll Rack lets you manipulate your hand, um, I guess, at the cost of card advantage. The two uh, complement each other really, really well. You get to search for three lands. You might have five lands in your hand on turn two, and then you get to rack them away. Um, and then shuffle again when you trigger land tax again. So you, you can get like a lot of card advantage from that. It's like you described it as a white prison deck. Yeah, like parf Parfait is just kind of this term that has somehow been inherited by uh, white, you know, white, not quite control, more like prison-esque, you know, prison-esque elements. And he's even dipped his toes into the red to allow uh, access to a blood moon, for example, which you know gives that opportunity to uh, to lock your opponent out on a completely different axis. Hence, the land base is two mountain sixteen plains. It's a weird land base, isn't it? But he's also got Mox uh, Diamond Mox Opal there to hit his red if he if he has to. So mm -hmm. I guess he figured he can splash for it pretty well. Yeah, looks Shall pretty we... exciting. Yeah, let's get down to the games. Um, oh. Looks like the players are just about to start rolling, and Tyrone's got a. Four? Is that a high roll or is it an odds even? It's probably an odds even. And uh, Sean, uh, you know, put his hands together in, in an indication of maybe he was uh, <laughs> he he won that roll. Uh, so Sean representing the salt mine. Uh, the salt mine have a podcast amongst other things. So feel free to check them out. There'll probably be some links in the uh, in the comments below. So both opening hands seem to be. Oh, I, look, I can only see uh, Tyrone's hand, but I mean, both people are on a full seven opening hand. And Sean's hand looks totally keepable, right? I Two saw land, brainstorm a land brainstorm land and bolt, so. yeah, uh, and a and a goif. It's basically exactly what you want. So, opening with ponder, and that's the snap. That's the, the the fastest snap shuffle I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, 
Three, back on shuffle. <laughs> I, I find it really interesting that um, Sean is still going Mongoose over Terramanda. I don't know. A lot of people have tested Terramanda in blue-red. I mean, it's a very similar list to blue-red tempo. Um, and it's interesting that... Because they both fill a very similar role. They're turn one, so you can play them early like a Delver, but obviously they get a lot better later once... For Mongoose, you can threshold, and for Terramander, it's it's basically the same card, right? Like mm, I think one's a really, shroud really and one's different. a well, they fit the same role though. Like one, mm, they both one I, drops that get better once you've got about seven cards in your bin, right? Yeah, that I, I see what you mean. As in, they are big late in the game, but Nimble Mongoose's shroud uh, is really really good in Legacy. It's it's really a struggle in Highlander to make that you know uh, good. But in Legacy, that Shroud is huge. Uh, whereas Terramander being hit by Pyroblast, which is ubiquitous in Legacy at the moment, kind of makes it a, a bit of a liability that I'm not too keen on if I was on Rug Delver, hence why Sean hasn't sleeved them up. I guess I'm glad... What I'm saying is I'm glad Sean's tested it. Yeah. It's certainly worth testing to see... Oh, absolutely. You know, to see which is better. Because I would argue, Sarv, that Mongoose... That, that Terramander being blue, yes, there's Pyroblast, but so is Delver... And if, if you go by that logic, then the Delvers will just eat the Pyroblast anyway. So if you have eight copies of uh, something that's Pyroblastable, you know, Pyroblast is always going to be a thorn in the side of a deck like this because it's cheap interaction. And Pyroblast is always going to be good. It's always going to be relevant. So I don't know. You are making their Pyroblast a bit better, I guess. But as I said, the, the Delvers could just eat all those Pyroblasts anyway. Yeah, you know? um, which is why you actually trim on Delvers often. Okay, yeah. so you when side you, out Delvers. When you play Delver, decks. yeah, you often end what, up shaving Delver. Put in, what, true names or something? Uh, you often leverage your green threats, which is why I'm sure Sean is kind of saying, oh, you know, Predict wasn't as good as the third Tarmogoy, for example. The green threats in in uh, Legacy are fantastic. You know, not being Pyroblast, not not being Hydroblasted, uh, and and having Shroud, for example, on the Mongoose, and being really, really swole, one swole bro on the Goyf. Uh, they're really, really resilient. But here we see a sequence of ponder, then the following turn, brainstorm, fix the hand, shuffle, get another ponder. Like, this is the, you know, the hidden mode of Rug Delver. You know, people think, it's Delver, play a turn one Delver of Secrets and then turn it sideways. Uh, the hidden mode is like, sculpt, 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 find the perfect system, and then kind of ride your threat once you've actually got the perfect hand. Yeah, that's right. But you, here you, on... In you don't need to be as mana efficient. Hmm. In, in Parfait's side. And so here, finally, the Mongoose comes down. And, you know, a lot, a lot of the time people like to run that Mongoose out on turn one and then it gets, you know, Diabolic Edicted or something and it feels really, really bad. But when you don't have protection for it uh, and it's a 1-1, one, one, nothing much is changing. But when you get to the point where you've sorted things out and then he comes down and he's a one swell bro, then protecting him is really good. While we were, while we were setting up, the video is just playing in the background. I said, Sav, is this on? Is this on fast forward? Because like Sean's hand movements are really, really quick. I oh, thought, he, I he, thought sequences, it was he, he sequences fast. I haven't seen anyone make brainstorm and ponder decisions so quickly. But even his fingers, like they, they're moving really quick. I'm struggling to keep up here. Hope Tyrone's keeping up. Look at that. You got. I maybe it is on fast forward. Are you sure? No, it is. This is this is just crisp motions. <laughs> this is crisp. All yeah. right, so we're, now we're in this position, as you said, where we've got a mongoose, we've got three lands to pack it up, and there's plenty of cheap interaction. I don't know how great uh, Wasteland's going to be in this matchup, but, you know, this is what's beautiful about it. It's not that it's a land-hate deck, it's that now on this turn, you know, Sean's, Sean's got the opportunity to say, well, hey, I can deploy another thread, I can keep up counter spells, or I can go for mana denial, you know, keep up Cyclone Wasteland you, so... That's what's good about this deck. You know, you, you can't see it as this aggro deck, as we've been saying. It's that you can get to this turn and have those various paths you can go down to a victory, either aggro or control -y, you know, or like a, a land denial. So mm. it looks like he's going to... I'd say he's probably going to play, hopefully, like a Goyf and keep up a Spell Pierce Days kind of thing. That would be, I'd mm. say, my ideal. Be nice. Uh, in, in the meantime, Tyrone has developed his board with Mox Diamond, uh, and he's got access to ample mana. And it's one thing we do have to worry about when you're against Parfait is the fact that oftentimes something like a moat, for example, or a humility, or a uh, wrath of God, one, something like that can just do an absolute number on a deck that's trying to be fast, but ends up doing hand selection in the early game. So 
you know, normally you you're it's okay to develop a little bit and then finally play your mongoose and then turn it sideways. But when your opponent is has an ivory tower and he's, he's going to go ghostly prison of, as well. Yeah, yeah, ghostly prison, ivory tower, cool and then wrath of god. I'm sure like, you probably haven't seen some of these cards, guys. Um, Zero knobs more a vintage card. Yeah. With fast one, but zero knobs says you can sack lands to gain two life. Sounds not ideal, but again, when you're playing against cards like you know, uh, wasteland and 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 such, you you're being able to sack a land to gain two life. Can be quite good. Being you know able to stabilize really your 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 um, your life. You know what's really good? What's that? Uh, it's not going to come up in this matchup, but oftentimes uh, the rug delver decks they end up playing uh, price of progress in the sideboard, and just imagine that price of progress. But you've got this zero orb out. Your opponent's got zero orb. You're like, when do I price? <laughs> How, yeah. how do I price? You don't need like, to keep do up I do any it? mana for it either. It's... Yeah, basically the, the price of progress turns into two mana, your opponent, your oppo- destroy X lands, you know, <laughs> and, you, and X is even, how is many lands running, your opponent wants to sacrifice. Is he no. even running non-basics? He's not. No, no, so he's completely is, immune. Price is completely irrelevant. Yeah, but, yeah completely immune. But know, as, principle, as is Wasteland, I suppose, but yeah, you know, it's just a, a way to stabilize life turtle. I guess maybe burn, burn matchups are his worst matchups. This, so, is, this is a sequence of play that you see often with... I don't know much about Puff, but... Yeah. This is a sequence of play you see often with Rug, which is the old, I'm on I'm on six cards in Graveyard, so Bolt you, attack with Mongoose, and essentially what happened is, even though, yes, bolting your opponent's face isn't great value, essentially that was a one mana deal five damage, so... <laughs> so Orem's Chant. Mm. Another card a lot of people might not have seen. They might be familiar with Silence, though. Uh, it's an instant that says players or your opponent can't cast spells this turn yeah it's so you like lose a... card advantage but you get like a key turn it's quite good against combo especially mm. it's like a silence that is actually and i'm not gonna say good okay uh against creature decks because silence is really woefully bad against creature based decks all right <laughs> i think it's a really bad card in this particular matchup because um sean doesn't need to deploy any more threats than he's already got out now as we said, it's the versatility of being able to choose a specific line. And when you get arms chant, you're just like, all right, well, I won't play any more threats. I'll just, like, you know, keep up counters for the next turn, etc. Um, and now he's got access to hard cast force of will. So we're getting pretty pretty late here. And arms chant's been preventing him from swinging as well. There's a kicker on arms chant, is that right? Yeah, that's, that's why correct. Sean's not swinging. Yep, and that was done in upkeep. But here is Wrath of God. So he's been waiting for the right time to snap off, snap it off. And so the Orem's chance were there just to buy time. But here, it gets spell pierced. Perfect example of what Tempo does. And then out comes uh, Path to Exile in the upkeep. And it's largely moot because Rug decks almost never have a basic land at all, ever. Uh, but it's still, you know, good to do it in upkeep in case they have a spell pierce or, a, you know, hard cast days or something they want to, you know, actually use their mana for and might actually affect them. But it's going to be largely moot here because... Look, even if this resolves, that uh, Nimble Mongoose is just going to be going sideways for ample time. But we have a hard cast force. I wasn't will. expecting hard cast force. Tyrone played around days, um, waiting till uh, he had that fifth mana available. Um, uh, but then he got done by the spell piece anyway. So, you know, he sort of wasn't playing around days. I was expecting a days. Uh, yeah, hard you cast can't play, force. Every, can't no, play around everything, right. right? Like, it just. I think he needs to rip some back to back sweepers. Yeah, yeah, can happen. And uh, Sean Brown's hand is There's only about... There's three Wrath of Gods in the, uh, in the deck. Yeah, Sean Brown's hand has only about three cards at the time, so it's perfectly fine for you to think, well, I can scroll rack a little bit, you know, try and find a way to, you know, get out of Wrath of God, because if you if you get it, then... And you stabilise. Remember, there's only ten threats in total in uh, Rug, so <laughs> that's two gone, you know, <laughs> when the Wrath happens. That's right. And uh, Ivory Tower, that's... Uh, is it... You gain life... Equal to, I'm not going to try to explain it. Yeah, Basically, you gain life if you, have, if you have a lot of cards in hand, you gain life, yeah. which sounds not great because I've in this position. But obviously, if you get it down turn one, there's a good chance you can just um, stabilize your life total, especially against Burn. It makes me really think the fact that he's running both that Burn must be Parfait's worst matchup. Mm. So, what do you think about this? So, Sean is committing to the board with two more uh, critters. He must have counters for yeah. rats. It means he's kind of got, like, I've got a spell pierce and a daze or something, and, and I'm good with just making sure that I don't lose to two spot removal spells. Yeah. Also, there's, like, zero orb, so maybe he's just thinking the only way I lose is to a moat or something like that. Yep. 
Yep. The Zero Norb is innocuous there. It's just kind of sitting there, and it actually represents uh, a life total of 10 on a critical turn. Yeah. So, so this I wouldn't be running at that many creatures because I'd be scared of Wrath. So I'd say he's got to have some he's got, kind of He's interaction. definitely got interaction. That's why. So this is a stifle, is it? No, okay. Whew. When when it was activate scroll rack, I was, and then one blue gets tapped, I'm like, oh, is this a stifle? <laughs> um, so this is a brainstorm in response. And obviously the hand has probably probably got, you know, a spell pierce and a daze or something and he's just Oh yeah, stifle. stifle. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that'll be that'll be game. So uh, yeah. Tyrone sadly looking at the top two cards and going, well, <laughs> it was probably not going to get me out of that with a with a mox diamond and a land. So going to sideboard, we'll check out um, Sean's sideboard. We sort of already touched on the sort of stuff he's going to be doing. Do you think he's going to be bringing in True Name as another non-interactive piece, or is that just going to get moated and humility post-board sort of thing? Yeah, so uh, when when True Name is out and humility is out, uh, the True Name, it's, uh, the humility kind of wins, right? So, uh, it's just going to be a 1-1, one, one, and it's going to be targetable. It's, it's just a creature. But regardless, having more threats against your deck, your opponent's deck that has a lot of answers, like, you know, these are Swords of Plowshares, Path to Exile, um, maybe it was just Path to Exile, no Swords of Plowshares, uh, and R Wrath of God, you know, lots and lots of ways to deal with a board. You just want more opportunities to draw interactive pieces, and things like Lightning Bolt are really, really bad uh, when you can't, when you know your opponent doesn't have any creatures. Yeah, and he's got the main board life gain. I think he'd probably bring in Cinder Vines of Brave. There's a lot of artifacts. He might bring in Sylvan Library, expecting that the game's going to go late, and finding key pieces is is critical. He might bring in Counter Spell. I'm not sure what the Counter Spell's for, like what matchup, but I guess there's like big blowout spells in this game, and as I said, you can assume it's going to go late. So. That's a possibility. Um, I doubt yeah. Life from Loam. Life from Loam is there for the Wasteland. Wasteland's pretty useless here, so that yeah. would be what I'd guess. Yeah, when when you Taking look at Wasteland... Taking dismembers and bolts, as you said. Mm. If you know your opponent is on no non-basics, uh, one thing that people don't like to do is they don't trim their Wastelands or take them out entirely, and that's entirely wrong because they think of their Wastelands as mana sources, and the thing is, waste, the Wastelands only cast Tarmogoyf, right? Literally, in, ru in Rug, that's the only card they're casting. In this one, it's slightly different because it's a predict. But fundamentally, <laughs> fundamentally, Wasteland is not a mana source. It's a, it's a fringy mana source, it's but it's really not a mana source. Point, yeah. It's a spell. It's four spells that use up a land drop slot. So when people don't trim them, I'm like, why, why, have, you le why have you left Wasteland in? You know, these are spells. Take out those spells. You know, and you put in, um, you know, things that are actually going to interact with your opponent as opposed to create one colorless mana. Um, I'm not saying all of them come out because remember, if you bring in two True Name Nemesis and two Abrade, for example, uh, you are actually uh, you're bringing going up, up yeah, slightly. You're going up. But you're taking out Dismember. I agree. I, I When I played Food Chain, I played four ways. I'd often take out maybe like two Wastelands. Mm. You know, if I'm, if if it's against someone who I don't want to be Wastelanding, I'd take out two because I still wanted two just for the mana. Um, but different deck because I'm trying to cast three drops in that. Uh, yeah. Should we check out Tyrone's yeah. sideboard? Tyrone's sideboard, uh, one, one thing that's going to be really, really interesting here is whether he goes big. Because when you go big and you bring in Elspeth Knight Errant, Baneslayer Angel and Nahiri the Harbinger, these are like top-end threats. If you get them past a Spell Pierce or Daze, for example, the Planeswalkers... Easier said than done. Yeah. If you get them past that, you basically can't lose if you survive one turn. Because, you know, the, the Delver deck's going to go, oh, okay, this is my chance, I have to kill you this turn, and in the moment that they don't kill you then, you are so far ahead. The problem is actually resolving them. Also note that he's got lower curve cards that are really, really good against aggressive decks, like timely reinforcements. In yeah, fact, I was going to say, three. he's got three timely. Timely's perfect against mm. a deck like this because it's a way to interact with Mongoose that's not... Um, that's not targeting it. Um, and, and you can be confident to... their bolts are out. That's so right. You, can't, yeah. you can go triple block Mongoose and they and they go, yeah, well, I've sighted all my bolts out. I have no removal. You know? yeah. <laughs> so you... I could also see Council of Judgment coming in if Tyrone expects to see True Name because it's a pretty clean answer to True Name. But otherwise, I don't love 
uh, judgment. Yeah. Your curve is just so difficult. To, yeah, yeah, but but you know he could bring it in thinking that, and and that's perfectly reasonable. I don't think. Uh, well, here's another question because his combo, he's got the helm of obedience, rest in peace combo. Mm. If you don't know it. Uh, the two cards win together, basically. That's the short answer. <laughs> um, so, like, you might see the rest in peace there and be like, oh, well, he's not playing a graveyard deck, so take those out. But does he need that for a win con? Like, does he does he have not enough win cons? If yeah, it, it all depends on whether he goes hard control or not. So, like, when you look at prison decks, when they t- shift into hard control mode, they end up being really, really good at controlling the board, really, really good at making sure they don't die. But then they don't actually close the game. Like, if you don't actually have a Planeswalker or, or a Baneslayer Angel, you go, well, um, I haven't actually closed the game. So over here we have uh, a Mulligan from Sean and a Keep from Tyrone. If this is a Keep from Tyrone on the play, I'm expecting something like uh, the Ivory Tower or something in hand because that's the kind of turn one on the play play this, feel really, really good against an aggro deck. Well, there's not... I guess that's one... Like, I'm looking at Tyrone's deck and I'm thinking, this is... Like, it's it's not a tiered deck. It's a bit of a fringy deck, but... But it I'm catches at people. It, yeah, mm. and I'm like, this is really cool. It's really good. It's got answers to, like, a lot of decks. I'm thinking it's got a good matchup against combo. It's got a good matchup against, you know, burn. It's got a good matchup against this, you know. But I think what it's lacking is, yeah, like, that ability to curve... Yeah, so what, what will happen is, yeah, you can just make sure, I definitely don't lose, and I definitely control the game. How do I win? And he, the way he's chosen to win is one of two ways. Uh, exile all graveyards and then activate Helm of Obedience, and nothing goes into the opponent's graveyard, so therefore they mill their entire deck. Or Goblin Char Belcher, flip over their deck, find the one of the two mountains, and just kill their opponent. So these are the ways he's chosen to win. But he can side both all of them out, end up bringing in lots of controly cards, some Planeswalkers, and here's a Lantax. Yeah, Lantax, oh, signed as well. Is that a Bob Maher signature? <laughs> so, hey, with Char Belcher, if there's no mountains in there, it won't do anything. Uh, yeah, they just kind of like go through your whole. But he's deck. got scroll rack. He's mountain. got scroll rack to put the mountain back in. Yeah, he's got two mountains, yeah. so he should be fine. He's got so he's played one mountain. So this was a this was a spell pierce on the ivory tower. Mm-hmm. This is interesting. Do you? Because you're on the play. I think I'd do the play that I was mentioning before, which is turn one, ivory tower, before your opponent has days or spell pierce, and just go, deal with this, I'm going to gain two life a turn. I agree. You can almost hold land tax in hand, because you're not going to trigger it immediately anyway. You make your ivory tower yeah, better. Yeah, play it on turn three. And like, if they spell pierce the land tax, like it's, you're on the play. I understand why he keeps it in. He keeps it in because he's playing a scroll rack deck, and land tax is particularly good. Most other decks would obviously side out on the play. Yeah, it's like um, brainstorm for you. Yeah, but I think, like, you know, if I got my land tax spell pierced or days there, I'd be like, eh. eh. You know, you know. <laughs> yeah, like, it's I've only good if so I'm good. triggering it and I have scroll rack, which is neither of the cases right now. Hmm. So I think the I game's agree. totally different if he let on the ivory tower. Yeah, and then, and then the thing about ivory tower is then you get to, like, play a bit more patient because the more cards in hand, the more you're gaining life. So you could almost ignore their threats for a little while and you can play patient, play at a land drop, wait, 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 get up to four or five mana, you know, stabilize your life total. You don't have to be as interactive. Tyrone's gone for this like interactive. Now I'm going to path the. Well, I mean, he has to because Ivory Tower's there. But now this is a critical decision. So he elects not to play a land here, but I believe it's incorrect because I think you're... he should play a land. So. Yeah, because uh, uh, when your opponent's on a tempo deck, they can always elect never to play more than two land, whereas you can never elect never to play more than two. I land, absolutely agree. Which is why I. I like Are we sure? Ivory Tower. Oh, yeah, like yeah, he, I, yes. he, d- he did have the he land. He thought about him. it and. Um, okay. I was like, please play the land. Because, <laughs> yeah, um, Sean's not going to play a third land. Now he's going to play a third land. <laughs> you know, if he wants to, he can. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, oh, so that's, absolutely. That's why I, yeah, I don't I mean, Sean's, like yeah, Sean's deck can literally run on two lands mm. quite well. Um, now, the, the Orem's Chant there, snapping up Orem's Chant to save one life and prevent a Tarmogoyf or something coming down is an interesting one. I don't think I like that one simply because you can go to your next turn. Well, I don't like Orem's Chant at all in this matchup. Uh, I think it's a necessary evil. I, I, I don't like it, but I think it's necessary. Whereas if he waited an extra turn or two and then played his fifth land, he can Orem's Chant on his own turn to say, don't daze me, bro, and then play Humility. And then if he, if he ends up uh, having his Orem's Chant dazed, he's like, sure, I'll play my two or three drop that I can resolve instead. Yeah, I guess. But that comes back to 
uh, Tyrone doesn't have that like such good curve that yeah. he can he can just play you know Orem's chant with the hope as you say about humility and then have like a proactive three drop. Um, so I also Sean did a bit of a slip of the hands there and revealed surgical. He's sideboard in surgical. Is that because he's so desperately scared of cards like humility that he wants to be able to daze it the first time? Then when daze becomes irrelevant, it doesn't matter because he's surgical to all those nasty parsies out. Well, the good thing is uh, cards like Humility aren't... Hu- he's not afraid of Humility because his creatures are still 1-1s one and okay. they turn well, sideways. Moat, then. But Moat, Moat or something like that, you know. Um, I'm, I don't recall whether or not Moat is in the deck, but, uh, you know, those kind of cards, those are, that are like hard locks, <laughs> those are the things that, yes, I, I agree. He just goes, well, i got a Surgical, all your Wrath of Gods, or i got what a Surgical. What does Solitary Confinement do, sir? Um, I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a second gonna... Mongoose. There's <laughs> a second Mongoose. We'll get our tech team onto it. I, I, I'm pretty sure there's another um, combo somewhere in there. I know when Solitary Confinement came out in Modern, people were talking about. So, uh, this might have been a, a bait. So, before, you know how he ran the humility into a potential Days of Spell Pierce? This is because it's possible uh, Tyrone was engineering a situation where his actual card he needs to win is the one that's actually going to resolve. And this is Helm of Obedience. If you haven't seen Helm of Obedience before, you can pay any number of mana and tap it, and you reveal that many cards from your opponent's deck, and then you can put a creature from amongst those cards into play. Uh, most of the time, it's not activating and putting a creature into play. Most of the time, it's activating when there are no graveyards. So it will keep on going all the way until you've revealed X cards, which is, um, you know, never going to happen, and your opponent mills their entire deck. So on Sean's uh, turn, he's going into another brainstorm, and he hasn't found a fetch land after the previous brainstorm. So this is kind of one of those, you know, you know how you go the perfect brainstorm where it's a, you know, you've got a fetch land ready to shuffle away the things. This is the the opposite of a perfect brainstorm, but he has the opportunity to do that because he is the beatdown. So he's going to try and fill that graveyard up and be able to attack with two mongoose. I think he's also very scared of um, untap to rest in peace activate Mm. I love that ponder there so that ponder there reveals another ponder a surgical extraction after that one and underneath that is a sylvan library so here basically Sean was going for the old I need to make sure I have threshold because I need to put the pressure on I need to tighten these screws because if the last card in hand is rest in peace he loses but if the card is not rest in peace, he needs to close the game faster than That's right. I, I mean, he, draw rest in if peace. he's not going to draw a counter spell, Daze doesn't do it, Spell Pierce doesn't do it. It's basically forced to fill a bust, and he probably would have forced the Helm. So he 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 probably doesn't. Well, he might have, but he probably doesn't have force. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Get so, the pressure on. Ask the question. Here's the surgical extraction on uh, Orem's chant, and the reason that he's chosen Orem's chant is specifically because it changes the clock. You know, if your opponent has an Orem's Chant for the following turn, it's kind of a, a fog, pseudo-fog. Uh, you can't develop your board, etc., etc. And also, it's a protection for Rest in Peace. Imagine if, you know, one of the you know, top two cards, you know, the sequence is Rest in Peace, Orem's Chant. So, it's not like it's the number one thing he's afraid of. It's just going, well, it's better than me exiling Humility, which, you know, still leaves my creatures around. I just realised another little... Um, interaction in Tyrant's deck, you can helm yourself after you've done your scroll rack. We haven't seen it this turn, but uh, this game, but the land tax scroll rack, when you put a bunch of cut lands back on the top of your deck after scroll racking it, you can then helm yourself, right? Yeah, sure. It's can. pretty cool. Uh, so there's solitary confinement. Solitary in confinement is basically an uber lock piece. You can't be a target of spells, you can't uh, lose life, or you can't be attacked, something like that. Um, you can't take damage, but you skip your draw step and have to discard instead. So if you've got scroll rack land attacks and you're getting this huge card advantage, you can just lock out the game. Speaking of card advantage and locking out the game, here's Sylvan Library. When your life total is not under pressure, Sylvan Library is like... Uh, it's it's like Painful Truths plus Sensei's Divining Top smushed together with no mana activation cost after the initial two mana. So yeah. good. It's Love really it. good. It's, it's an anti-sort of control card. If, I guess Sean knew we were going to go late in this match. Uh, so he he's put it in and again it's that I'm not getting attacked because I'm the aggressor you know so well and he's going to lose to combo not to life so you can pretty confidently pay a lot of life here right mm-hmm. even if even if the cards you see on top aren't that good you're just like I can pay this life you know and brainstorm them away and manipulate it afterwards and that's exactly what he's done 
you know, those cuts are fine. Like wasteland is not great. He doesn't love yeah. wasteland. He just wants to dig past it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you can you can shuffle them away later. So yep, the life total is largely irrelevant. Uh, and then you know, go to Tyrone's turn. He slams Bane Slayer Angel. <laughs> 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 um, so this is going to be interesting to see what Tyrone does. Does he just take it or does he activate? Yeah. So this is a desperation activation. If you've never seen a desperation activation, it's pay all the mana I can, activate Helm targeting you, hope I flip a creature, use it to block your creatures. That's the plan. Imagine if he flips true name Nemesis here. How good would that be? <laughs> here we go. Five cards. One, two, three, four, five. No true name Nemesis. Ah, that's a whiff. Uh, and the helm sticks around until you actually get a creature off it, which is pretty sweet. Uh, so it's kind of like a, let's do it, go to one, and then let's hope that we draw the rest in peace here. And, and you know, Orem's Chant, they're gone though. So yeah. like if you had an Orem's Chant... And there's a force piece, so, yeah. uh, in Sean's hand there. So here we go, rest in peace, rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's got the solitary confinement to, you know, protect it as well, right? So here we go. Solitary confinement. Well, it's another fog, right? Uh, Basically. Here's, fog. here's the force of will. So this, he has to make, Sean Brown has to make this play in case the last card, one of the last cards in hand is rest in peace because then he wouldn't be able to daze or spell pierce the rest in peace, right? Well, you could daze a rest in peace because then... It, no, because, uh, wait, solitary confinement, does that stop spells? It stops spells targeting you. Targeting you. Oh, okay, yeah, that's yeah. specific, isn't it? Yeah, so you could actually daze the rest in peace because it costs one to activate helm. So here comes the here comes the actual literal counter spell, which has been boarded in, and a Delver of Secrets is amongst them. But at the end of the day, you probably just want to go like, I've got a counter spell, and I'm going to make sure I win. But remember, how he sequences this is very tricky because Helm of Obedience can be activated. Imagine, so isn't this interesting? If he leaves a Delver of Secrets on top, oh, <laughs> and the Helm, yeah. yeah, but he can actually intentionally so he wants, do yeah, that. He wants to draw yeah. the counter spell, yeah, and he probably and leave wants... the Delver on top so that. When the helm activates, it'll flip the Delver. The yeah. helm will be destroyed. Delver can't do anything about two attacking creatures. That's right. Can only mm. chop one. Yeah, it's probably correct just to take counter spell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the I like that. Yeah. This is interesting. No more spells. Yeah, you cannot cast any spells ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless this is they're awkward. creatures. So it's Bane Slain Bear. Like, Bane Slain. Yeah, here's the Bane Slayer Angel here's the Delver of Secrets okay. you would like, and well, that's that game. One. Yep, not enough blockers there. So that was a clinic by Sean Brown, but a sweet, sweet deck by Tyrone. It was really interesting to see Parfait in action, and also see you know imagine all the lines where you go, Ooh, rest in peace here is a win. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that. That was round four of the Adelaide Eternal Legacy Cup, and we'll be back with round five going into the top eight, so standings are just about to be posted. See you then, guys.